on some of the things that have happened over the last um, thanks Nick the last few days few weeks but at the same time um, towards the end we're going to try and um, plan just a little bit or tell you what our thoughts are about uh, the month of June when we have scheduled for a two-day in-person kind of what we're thinking and what we would like for you to bring to that conversation so Teresa is um, jotting down some questions here anything that all right okay we'll take we only on you okay all right so I hope everybody can see the PowerPoint, some slides that we're going to walk through with you. The first thing that we wanted um, is we want to give you a little bit of an accreditation update. And Nick, I'm, it's changing over here, but it's not changing up there, but that's all right. So, for an accreditation update, we met yesterday with the state board and we are still, we, we, we had some school districts come in and they did a fantastic job. We had um, Kansas City, Wichita, um, Olathe, Bueller, Derby, and Humboldt came in and shared with the, the board not only how they've been working through a systems approach of pre-K through 12, but also some of the processes they've all, already been working on um, throughout using some of the rubrics and processes with the accreditation model. Now, I thought it was really good for the board to be able to have that kind of uh, uh, of what it looks like from large districts to mid districts. The one um, superintendent that was going to come in from a small district, um, Bert Moore from West Elk, um, ended up not being able to make it. So we're probably going to try and bring him to the May board meeting so he could share a perspective from a small district. The, um, the timeline that we want, we're looking at with the, the keys of timeline and some, the, the board members had great questions. For example, they were like, what's KISA stand for? Well, that was a good question. So we're trying to move away from language of QPA. So the advisory council chose the terminology KISA for Kansas of Education Systems Accreditation. Um, and it made me think, well, how many people in the field don't know that that's what we're terming it right now? That may not be end up being the official name, but that's what we're calling it right now. But kind of our timeline is we did our workshop yesterday with the board, and it was really at the 30,000 foot level. Um, we have some things that we're going to have to put together to bring back to them, but at the May board meeting, we are going to bring them some recommendations as a receive item. With the goal that we hope that they will take some action in June. If that happens, what we would like to do then for this summer is unplug, that's an IT term, unplug the QPA annual report and all of that stuff. And we wanted, we will replace it. And I'll kind of show you an example here of what we want to replace it with to get people thinking about moving into the 16, 17 school year the new um, KISA model. 
And we know that it'll be a staggered implementation in five groups. And I'll kind of share with you why we believe that. If we can unplug the QPA annual report and we move away from buildings, what we would do is submit a survey to school districts and we would do that sometime this summer. We'll be waiting for the board to take some action and have a school district go through this survey and I'll show you kind of an example of what's in there to find out where would they be in that five year implementation cycle. Everywhere from we've done nothing with the new model, so we would be in the first year to where we've already um, looked at the rubrics, we've already um, pulled some teams together, we've set some goals, but that would be the intent of sending this survey out. We've already started sending some weekly uh, preparation activities in advance um, just to get people to start thinking about um, we would like to in May or June depending we have May 2nd but we know right now it'll at least um, be after the um, May board meeting getting people to think about what the new process would look like. And again, the purpose of the survey is twofold. It would help districts get an idea of where they would enter the process, kind of familiarize them with the process. It would help us in knowing how many districts would be coming in at what different phases, and also allow us to kind of really hone in on what types of topics, level of support that are gonna be needed across the state. These are just some sample types of questions that um, in format, we don't see it taking more than 10 to 15 minutes for a school district to fill out and it would just be probably the superintendent or the superintendent's designee because it's asking where is their district at. But it would just ask some questions, let them rate kind of on a Likert scale where they think they are. Um, there would be some questions about, have you done any building needs assessment? Have you done any district? Have you um, had any professional development? Have you identified any goals yet? So that will that's our goal right now is as soon as the board starts taking some action, we want to move away this summer from the QPA report, replace it with a survey to get school districts thinking about where they're at in the process and where they would be, where, what they would be working on next year. And that's something that I think also the KPLT group would be able to help us kind of really strategize what exactly are the needs that uh, we anticipate the field's going to uh, require next year as we transition to the new model. Of course, this is all depending on the board taking some action. Um, if you have questions um, or you know that you're working with districts with questions, please share with them the, these contact people that would be able to reach out to, to you or different school districts. As far as assessment, just an update. Right now, um, it appears that the, the testing window is going well. Um, most judging by um, information we're getting from CETE daily, we have a lot of kids uh, completing the assessment. Um, we are pretty much and hats off goes to the field um, finished. 
We're close to being finished with the grading of the performance items. Um, we do have CETE, if they have not yet, they will be releasing to the school districts that still had something possibly planned. Um, these last couple weeks around grading performance items, they're gonna to put together a packet to send out to, uh, of materials and resources and training to still allow some school districts that want to, to do some activities around scoring. Um, but they would, but they would not be logging in to score actual student uh, performance items because the way it looks right now, they're done. Uh, they've all been scored, I think. I don't know if we, we've got I know the third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, there might be a eighth and 10th grade maybe are the only ones that are left. Um, but they're, they're getting down to just a few. So, um, so anyway, that's good news. Bad news is we need to, uh, or the challenge, some school districts still had some things planned. So CEPE is, that hey, absolutely, we'll get some things out there for them to be able to uh, um, do some activities on some professional development days here at the end of the year to be able to do that. So, well, one thing we're going to do, many of you will remember, and some of you were involved in the College and Career Ready Assessment Advisory Council, or as we like to call it, the CRAC. Um, we will be looking at bringing them back the morning of May 10th. We see some opportunities under ESSA and even with the board's new vision. We want to have a conversation with this group. What do we want the state assessment moving forward, not only just summative, but formatives, interims? What would we like to have in Kansas and if there's changes or things that we may look at doing differently going into 1718, when ESSA, our plan has got to be in place, we want to have some conversations about that. And I'm going to give you, this is a slide that we kind of shared with the board and with the uh, curriculum leaders that, will they be able to see my mouse? All right, hopefully you can see my mouse moving here. Um, ESSA is about this section, the summative assessment. It's the end of the year, used as a snapshot. We're required to give it in grades three through eight, and once in high school in math and English language arts. The science footprint hasn't changed, but what do we want the summative to be? What do we want it to inform? And how quickly do we want to get the results back to you? What we would then like to do with this group is say, what kind of a package would we like to have in Kansas? And if we could reduce a little bit the size of the summative, and possibly even with the performance items, move those into an interim, or spend more of our time focusing on interims and formatives with the goal that the blue, the interims and formatives are all optional and voluntary, but they're more um, instructionally sensitive, instructionally timely for teachers, and we kind of have a three-stage, more of a balanced assessment system where the whole focus doesn't end up being just on the summative. That's just an end of year. We could uh, make it even to the size where it's just a, a, a two section where all kids take the first in one class setting. They follow up second with another and they're done. We, and it's just machine scored. So there's a lot of options that we can have throughout this model. 
we're going to bring the crack committee back in and say what is it that we really want right now before we move into ESSA and in to us we would like to spend more time looking at the interims and formatives and making those of quality and available to school districts so we are going to bring that group in on the 10th have that conversation with them so just wanted this group to to be aware that that'll be taking place I'm going to have Tammy visit just a little bit with you about another initiative that Dr. Watson has moving forward. Or, or, all right, I've also got a whole team in here, and they're all fighting over who wants to talk next. <laughs> okay, Tammy, right. you're up. Okay. All right, so I am a little bit away from what we from the microphone, so if you have, have trouble hearing me, please be sure to write a comment and I'll try to speak louder. So I um, just wanted to make you guys aware that um, there is a, this um, pilot initiative that has been launched by uh, Commissioner Watson, and so I wanted to just give you uh, a little overview so that as you're out and about talking with districts and schools, you might be um, talking out with some other people who are also um, talking to the principals about some of the same topics. So the Kansas State Department of Education is piloting this education fellows program, which brings together some of the state's top educators that training opportunities for districts. Um, the initiative is launched by the commissioner, Dr. Watson, to engage top educators in providing training to the field on Kansas initiative. A team of uh-oh, somebody said they can't hear me well. So I have, I'm relocating. I could use my lunchroom voice, but I'm just going to sit closer. So, um, so this team of three exemplary educators are available to travel to districts across the state. It's free of charge, and they're going to be delivering training events for teachers and administrators. So so the first training opportunity will be conducted in June and July and will focus on the Kansas State Board of Education's new vision and the five outcomes that will be used to measure the progress towards achieving the vision. The five outcomes are kindergarten readiness, social emotional growth measured locally, graduation rate, individual plans of study, and post-secondary completion. So I got ahead of myself. The training schedule options for the first sessions are 9 to 3 a.m., 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. with lunch on their own or provided by the district, or 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. with a working lunch provided by the district. While the training is free, districts have to provide the venue and access to the internet. So, um, as I said, you know, it's, it's a way of engaging some of our high-flying um, educators in Kansas and really um, equipping them to help move um, some of the, the initiatives set out by the board forward. And so, like I said, you may be crossing paths with them. You may be inviting them to your district. They did have one meeting already where we gave them kind of a, you know, drinking from the fire hose overview of a lot of these initiatives. And um, they're very eager and excited. And so we just wanted to make you aware of that. So the slides don't have quite as much detailed information as some of these talking points, so we'll try to make sure that, that that information is made available to you as well. So, yeah, that was it in a nutshell. So I'm going to go on to our next topic, which is kindergarten readiness. And this slide is completely full of too much writing, but um, we wanted you to have uh, a nutshell of information and kind of a quick um, snapshot of the work that's been going on. Um, we have been working with an advisory group compi comprised of, oh, when will districts hear back on the dates they sent in? Someone asked this, I think that might be about the, um, the education fellows, um, Teresa, if you could figure out who sent that question, we will get an answer and email that to you. 
Yeah. Uh, oh, Michael Kunstead. Uh, I think they are trying to. Uh, they're, they're working with Penny Rice, um, Randy's uh, administrative assistant, and she will be contacting and scheduling those with the district. So uh, once they're working the calendars out, um, some of hopefully they're getting back to them within a few days. Or once a school district submits a date and she tries to connect them with some of the fellows and then gets notification back out to them if it works. So, um, so Penny's working directly with the district right now. Thank you, Brad. So in regards to kindergarten readiness, we have been working with uh, an advisory group made up of people from the Children's Cabinet and Trust Fund, KSDE, um, DCF, Head Start, um, and kindergarten educators. And we've been meeting regularly since January since the board defined kindergarten readiness as kind of every list I've seen it on is kind of been right at the top of the new vision and board out, outcome. And so we've been meeting and talking about, you know, how to move this work forward. And so um, our guidance at, the, at first has been to start with a, a kindergarten readiness um, tool. We didn't, at first we talked about whether we wanted some kind of an assessment or a test or a screening tool. And so what we've all decided upon and what, um, Randy and Brad have guided us on is to um, find a developmental screening tool. And so we are about ready to um, release what that screening tool will be, but we've been in negotiations with um, the author and with um, the publisher because there is a tool that's already very well established, but we want to have the opportunity to have access to it as a pilot. So we've been working on that. But um, this timeline is kind of a, it's ever evolving. So this timeline is where we're at today. And so we are working really hard and anticipate a fall 2016 roll, yes, 2016 roll out of this developmental screening tool to uh, be used by a pilot group of schools. We think and are and hope that we can get around 2,000 kindergarten students engaged in the screening process in the fall of 2016. Um, so as you're talking about it, if schools are just really excited about wanting to try it out um, before we do a statewide rollout, have them contact me. We are I'm already starting a list. Um, so, so as you carry that forward, anybody that's interested, we, we would bring them on board for this pilot. Um, the screener we, we're selecting will collect information on language and literacy, cognition and general knowledge, including math and science concepts, um, approaches to learning, physical well-being and motor development, and social emotional development. So I, the thing about this screening tool is that it will provide a snapshot of the whole child. Where are these kiddos at when they come to kindergarten? One of the big things, one of the big messages we want to make sure we get out in absolutely everything is that a screener is in no way um, a gate to keep kids out of kindergarten. Um, the requirement to be a kindergarten student in the state of Kansas is to be five years old by the cutoff date. So we are not in any way rolling out some kind of tool to keep kids out of kindergarten. Rather, we want to see where kiddos are when they come to kindergarten, and hopefully that will help um, inform decisions on how prepared are the kindergarten teachers for the students that they're receiving. Um, this uh, screener that we're, we're working with um, will engage families and caregivers to gather information about the child's development and early childhood experiences. Um, the screener is easy and quick to administer. One of the things that we all agreed on um, with this um, advisory group was that there we don't want to have some kind of a test where some kindergarten teacher is going to have to pull students to the side to ask questions while the other little people are supposed to be happily engaged in something because we know that in the first two months of kindergarten, um, that would be very, very difficult to administer. So we're really excited about this tool. More information will be coming. 
but there will be some flexibility in how it's administered. And so, um, more, like I said, more info to come. Um, this tool that is being considered that we're working with, um, we want to make sure everyone knows that it does have a high degree of inter-rater reliability and validity. It's appropriate for use with any developmentally ap appropriate practice and it is culturally and linguistically appropriate. So we're not up here at KSDE cooking up our own test or for kindergartners. It's not like a ditto, you know, five-year-old state assessment. It is a screener, it's a snapshot, um, and it's something that is really used across early childhood programs and across kindergarten programs around the nation. So anyway, that's just the, the snapshot really quick of what um, what's been rolling around here in kindergarten readiness. And if anyone has any other questions, um, for those of you that maybe haven't heard, um, kindergarten readiness is now on my plate. Tammy Mitchell, T. Mitchell at KSCE.org. So Hello. I think we have some questions, maybe? Can you read them? Yes. yes. What's the thought process about when the well, those are good questions, and right now we want the tool to be used with kindergarten students that would be after they start school in the fall. For the pilot, we anticipate that it will take a little time to get things rolling, so we would give teachers and parents um, the first semester to administer the tool um, with after feedback hoping that we can maybe get that data a little bit sooner um, in, when we do a statewide rollout, you know, giving giving them maybe until mid-October to administer it. Is there training for the people with Yes, there will be a complete training plan. Um, the publishers that we're working with will um, in fact, we have a call with them in another week and a half to outline a training plan so that we can do a trainer of trainers model and get um, our pilot um, people um, up and up to speed and ready to uh, facilitate the administration of it and with plans for a statewide rollout, 30,000 kindergartners, 2,000, 3,000 kindergarten teachers in 2017. So that, like I said, this timeline is is in pencil form, but that's that's what we're operating under is that in that kind of timeline. Other questions? All right. As you have more, feel free to shoot me an email, tmitchell at ksde.org. And then I only have one more thing to update you on: the Kansas Learning Network, and I am still the state contact. Um, of the Kansas Learning Network. So if you think that, you know, I did tail in for kindergarten readiness, nope, it's all, it all flows really nicely together. So um, I just wanted to give you an update of where we're at on, on that. Um, I don't really know that much of this has changed since the last time we met and talked about um, ESSA, but um, we are completing the work with our current focus and priority schools that were identified in 2012. Um, a new cohort of comprehensive support and improvement schools will be identified using 2015 and 2016 API data and other measures. And this uh, group will be um, identified in August or September um, of 2016, and they will participate with, with the Kansas Learning Network for three years. Um, then the other measures are going to be decided by the ESEA Advisory Council and the KLN subcommittee, which is represents all of the districts that currently have priority schools. And we'll, we sh by June, we'll have a lot of really good information about this, but we're looking at API or academic plus is what we're calling it, academic plus or A plus. And um, the plus will be um, determined by our, our group and we meet in early May. Um, data will be rerun using 2015, 2016, and 2017 data. To, um, to make sure that we have, we have the schools that we need for um, comprehensive support and improvement identification and KLN participation. Um, we have hired, KLN has hired a team of full-time coaches dedicated solely to the support of KLN districts and schools. 
and um, they start July 1. We're really excited. We've got a really um, enthusiastic, sharp team of professionals from around the state that have um, joined our bandwagon, and, and they'll be ready to roll July 1. And then um, we anticipate next fall of 2016, we'll, we'll have our new coaches, we'll have our new cohort, and those coaches will work with districts and schools to facilitate their needs assessment. And as we've been saying before, the needs assessment is the needs assessment is the needs assessment. So there's not going to be a KLN needs assessment and a PISA needs assessment. It's going to be one one thing and so our coaches will be able to support districts and buildings as they go through the KISA needs assessment rubrics and that process. So we're really excited about aligning the work um, instead of improvement work in silos, integrating it um, in meaningful ways for districts and schools. Um, anybody that has questions about the Kansas Learning Network can contact me, T. Mitchell, at ksde.org or Michelle Hayes, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, uh, dot Hayes, H-A-Y-E-S, at uh, southwestplains.org. So we'll try to get that um, information out to you. Michelle Hayes is our full-time KLN director. Any other questions? No, no questions? All right, and, and also <clears throat> I wanted to thank you for being patient with our process here. We are using a new uh, uh, Skype version and so, you know, thank you for being patient with our sound and our technology as we, um, you know, as we learn something new and we're actually facilitating a meeting doing it. So we're learning a lot. Thanks. Have a good day. Yes. Switching over to Office 365 was like uh, stumbling around in the dark. So, with, and someone moved the furniture around. So <laughs> we're working on it. All right, there were a few other things that I wanted to just kind of share with you. I don't know if you would find these helpful. <clears throat> but we've got some, uh, our agency and the state board and Randy has put together um, some postcards. And, and I think everybody here has received a the PowerPoint. So these were just some postcards that that um, Teresa actually pulled into a PowerPoint slide for us around the board's vision, their goals, their outcomes. Um, this first card here that you see is just a card that if you're out there, this one really just kind of talks about, you know, the the, the vision that Kansas will lead the world in the success of each student. Um, members of the board, because a lot of people out there may not know who, the, who our board members are, that there's 10 of them, and who their elected board member is. So I thought this would be a good slide that you may wanna include as you are, are out and about. Um, the second slide, this is just kind of a nice graphic. This one is, um, about leading, uh, what's it going to take for us to move forward in education with this new vision, um, kind of a little bit about why the vision was set. This next slide, uh, investing in the future <clears throat> of Kansas children, um, it kind of, I'm a little far away from it here. Uh, there we go. But we thought that there might be uh, some benefit. Um, this one, this slide here, the cute little girl on there. It's just when you're out there talking to people about the importance of uh, preschool and early childhood. Uh, there's a huge, you know, there's still people out there that are just like, you're trying to steal our kids at an early age. They just don't know the value and the huge difference in the gap in kindergarten uh, between kids that have access to early learning opportunities and the kids that don't. So this is just a, a good little slide that you can talk 
quite a bit with the, your constituents and the people you're meeting with about the importance of early childhood. This next slide jumps right to graduation. Uh, has a little bit about the um, talk about what a successful graduate has the academic, cognitive, technical, employability. It includes the civic engagement now, which is new to it. And then it has the five outcomes underneath. So again, another uh, nice slide that just talks about the definition of what a successful graduate is, and then how the state, at a state level, the outcomes that we're going to look to, to see if we're we're getting there. This is another slide or just on kindergarten readiness, the importance of it, and just some bulleted facts about, you know, why did the state board set kindergarten readiness as one of their state outcomes that they want to focus on? Um, talks about the achievement gap. Um, uh, Ninety percent of a child's brain architecture is built before age five. So again, just another uh, one slide card that can be used to just ha to have some good conversations locally. This next slide <clears throat> talks about individual plans of study, you, you know, the importance of it, that they need to be flexible, career focused, um, rigorous, relevant, uh, developed cooperatively, career exploration. So again, sometimes, you know, if the state wants to set that as a high priority, we just thought you might need to be able to have just kind of a nice little one summary. Again, another, all of these cards you can download from our website. If you want to use them for, uh, to make handouts. Uh, we had a school district yesterday share with the board where they took each one of these cards from the state level and flipped it around and on the back side, instead of Kansans can, they had USD, whatever their USD number can, and they had their own personal pictures on it. So, got a question? Companies been identified that will help us with our IPS. So. The question is, are there any companies yet? The RFP is still out there. Um, we should be hearing back from them soon. I would anticipate we would get responses from uh, obviously Cooter, which is the Kansas Career Pipeline, uh, Naviance, and probably. Um, career cruising. So those are three that I believe uh, will respond to that. We've had calls from some other ones. So I, I hope that answers the question. This next slide, this is another one talks about high school graduation rate. Uh, just a little bit of information of the importance of it. Um, you know, Kansas, we're setting at 1415 at 85.7%. Although that is good, a good number nationally, we know that we've got to do better. Um, again, some, some just more bulleted details that you can share with people. Um, by the year 2020, 71% of the jobs are going to require some post-secondary that means they've got to graduate high school. And of those jobs, you know, 36% are going to be a bachelor's degree or higher, 35% certificate or associate. So again, just another nice card or, or just a, a PowerPoint slide visual just to have start those conversations with teachers. These are all, you know, why is it important? You know, what's changed? in the last decade or two. This next slide, <clears throat> this is post-secondary completion, attendance. Again, you know what business says. Um, just, again, just three good uh, bullet points 
about what is it going to take for for a student to successfully enter the middle class they've got to have some kind of post-secondary completion or attendance we've got also a slide on social emotional growth again Kansan said that that was extremely important it should be measured locally um, again just give some good talking points about the importance of it what is it um, why is it as, as, as valuable as whether or not a kid is just academically prepared but again another nice um, slide but we thought we'd want to send some of these out for you uh, to be able to incorporate into some of your PowerPoint um, you know I use this with a school district not too long ago and you can spend all day just having conversations about the value of and explaining why the state's going in this direction so um, one of the next things so that's really just kind of an update with some of the materials um, do we have someone want to talk about um, some of these next slides or we'd like to get some input um, we, th these are just questions that we have we don't need answers today but um, kind of start collecting who's requesting services trying to kind of get a response are you getting calls um, are there people you know what what what's your work look like what topics updates are being requested um, are there things we need to be covering uh, that we're not especially thinking about where we've been this year and where we're headed next year got a question Lots of interesting pay voices. I'm not following for that one. Okay. That, so the Kansas Teacher of the Year group or the, the, the fellows? Yeah. And again, that's just another vehicle, uh, not in competition with or not any. It's just we have this resource of the Keen teachers, the K Toy teachers. Uh, each year there's another group of of a uh, teacher of the year uh, uh, k-toy team which means there was one last year and the year before and the year before how can we continue to tap in to their spirit and their knowledge and and they they were hungry to uh, give back more than maybe they uh, we were using them for uh, so that that's how they came up with the uh, the teachers fellows So on June 29th and 30th, those are the um, the scheduled dates for the the June in-person KPLT meeting. Um, here's what we're thinking: when, as you go through um, all the initiatives that we have, we're thinking about how we will be hopefully by that time moving forward with the new accreditation model going into next year. Um, we're, we want you to think about bringing to that meeting your best. Um, what have you been doing out there in the field with school districts around civic engagement, individual plans of study, um, kindergarten readiness? Some of them haven't had the opportunity to do a lot, but some of them you're doing really great thing. We want you to bring your good stuff in. Um, that way we can spend a couple days really creating some some good messaging some good messages some good um, professional learning activities that we can be getting out uh, by the, the start of school next year and and hit the ground running um, as well as um, how are we communicating the kplt messaging it uh, next year will be a fun year but it'll be a busy year a lot going on with the board's initiatives and their goals and outcomes um, so with that uh, Nick do we want to open up the mics 
Does anybody have questions or you can type them in if you want? But that's kind of what we wanted to do today, is just kind of bring you up to speed, um, what the board's doing, kind of where we're at on some key initiatives around assessments, kindergarten readiness, KLN, um, as well as what we're thinking about for June 29th and 30th. Most of the mics are open if they, okay. if they want to join. Any comments, questions? This is being recorded. Um, so there have been a few people that weren't able, they emailing that they weren't going, they having difficulty joining us. Uh, but as soon as um, we get this ready, we'll send it out to everybody so you can listen to it again or for the first time. All righty. Well, we'll uh, uh, let us know if you have any questions um, between now and June 29th and 30th. If something comes up, you know how to get a hold of us. Um, we'll look forward to the June KPLT meeting. All righty.